Um, Steve, I think you mentioned uh, that some of these are just picked up incidentally on, on imaging. Um, Eric, uh, do, does imaging play a role in the initial uh, diagnostic workup? Um, I don't, initially, I don't think it does play a role until after the surgery. I mean, you're going to almost always take it out. You know, so you, you like to know something like the calcitonin CA, you want to know if something's widespread, but if you really don't see anything, it's going to be the same no matter what, what happens. The idea is to get low control to do the thyroidectomy. And it's rare that a patient won't have that no matter what else, wherever, wherever else the disease is. Yeah, so, so essentially, we're going to flow to a thyroidectomy. We're going to flow to some sort of surgical procedure. Well, although um, before thyroidectomy, the surgeon is going to want to have an imaging study done. And I think typically, uh, prior to thyroidectomy, ultrasounds are done of the, of the neck. Um, however, I think for medullary thyroid carcinoma, some surgeons certainly do consider uh, neck CT scan in addition to a neck ultrasound because of the nodal distribution that can be seen that's atypical for medullary thyroid carcinoma compared to thyroid, uh, for differentiated thyroid cancer. So you can have more uh, mediastinal disease, more likely, which you wouldn't be able to pick up on an ultrasound or more retropharyngeal nodal involvement as well as possible with MTC. So and this the, is and the initial calcitonin numbers can help guide that. Right. So when we talk about what initial staging we're frequently doing, if somebody has a calcitonin that's 30 or 40 and there's only one a centimeter nodule in the thyroid, then an ultrasound is probably adequate. But more typically, the calcitonins are in the several hundred range, and the patient may have some lymph nodes, in which case we routinely CT or MRI the neck and the chest so that that first surgical approach is done appropriately. Because the ultrasound is great, but it will miss, as Lori said, high retropharyngeal lymph node, deep paratracheal mediastinal. So unless it's one of those really small confined to the thyroid medullaries that I think an ultrasound is okay with, then doing more cross-sectional imaging to make sure that we're helping the surgeon know exactly which therapeutic neck dissections need to be done. So the calcitonin, the size of the tumor, the presence of lymph node metastasis, all of that makes us more anxious to do initial, more complete imaging up front. So the sequence, fine needle aspiration, make the diagnosis or suspicion of medullary cancer, measure the calcitonin. If the calcitonin is more than about 500, then cross-sectional imaging, neck, chest, and probably the, the liver uh, become uh, relevant because that's when you start to get a higher yield of being able to diagnose uh, distant disease. So that initial calcitonin number is, is, is pretty critical to what type of uh, management you're going to do in the initial workup. Right. Pre-thyroidectomy, a calcitonin of more than 450 to 500 really begins to increase the yield uh, of distant imaging. Post-thyroidectomy, the numbers are, are lower and, and a cutoff of about 150 to 200, you begin to get a yield from distant imaging. And that pre-op calcitonin tells you not only about your initial staging, but it tells you what's the likelihood you're going to cure that patient. If that pre-op calcitonin is 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, no matter how good of neck dissection you do, very unlikely to get a biochemical cure. So even early on in this discussion with the patient, as you're still trying to figure out the extent of disease and staging, you can begin to set realistic expectations. We may not be able to make this number go away, or if the number's really low, maybe we can. So that initial calcitonin number really helps us know our initial staging but also begins to tell us what the prognosis might be like over time. You know, it's also important for the surgeon to know what the presence of distant metastasis may be as well. So if there, if there are uh, gross distant metastases, the patient's not going to be cured, and there's a possibility to get good disease control in the neck without doing a highly morbid neck operation that is going to be important for the surgeon to plan on as well. You certainly don't want to risk bilateral vocal cord paralysis in somebody who isn't, doesn't have an opportunity to be cured from neck surgery. So last week we saw one of those relatively rare medullary patients that had a one or two centimeter medullary, some little small lymph nodes, and terrible extensive distant metastasis in the lungs and in the bones. Is that somebody you would consider not even doing a thyroidectomy on? Um, this young girl had had disease progressive for the past several months coming up. I mean, we all know in medullary we're supposed to do thyroid surgery, but is that a patient you would consider not doing a thyroidectomy on? 
Sure, I'm not a surgeon, so <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but no, I, I, I have a, a patient, a, a similar patient that I'm taking care of right now who had very bulky symptomatic progressive disease um, at the initial uh, uh, time of, of identification of the medullary thyroid carcinoma, and we went straight to systemic therapy for her. She never has had a thyroidectomy and has never had a neck dissection.